Egypt, one of the most accomplished civilizations to ever exist, soon to reach its fate. How could this take place, and what battle could have caused the downfall of this civilization? First, let's take a look at what happened before the battle, during Cleopatra's rule. Cleopatra was a bright young woman, as well as the last leader of Egypt. Her earliest husband was Julius Caesar. Caesar was the ruler of Rome, but later he got brutally backstabbed and killed. This meant that leadership was transferred to his two main relatives, Mark Antony and Octavian. Not long after, Cleopatra got married to Mark Antony, and they happily ruled Egypt together. But Octavian was filled with rage because of Mark Antony leaving to be with Cleopatra. This led to the battle that would destroy an empire. Octavian declared war on Cleopatra, therefore Mark Antony. He also convinced the majority of the Roman court to turn on Mark Antony, although some of them decided to go leave Rome and assist Antony and Cleopatra. Mark Antony and Cleopatra started preparing for war. Even though they were very strong, Octavian still took over. They fought long and hard, but their armies would still face defeat. Cleopatra and Antony had 140 battleships, although it was only over about half of Octavian's 260, which is another reason that might have contributed to the outcome of the battle. Octavian carefully positioned his ship so that Cleopatra and Mark Antony would be trapped in the connecting area between the Ionian Sea and the Ambracian Gulf, with no means of escape, which is another reason why he won the battle. Some weapons that were used during the naval war were catapults, javelins, spears, crossbows, and harpoons. Later on in the battle, three of Cleopatra and Antony's boats left out of fright, which caused Antony to tell Cleopatra to retreat as well and board the Antonia ship. Later on, he caught up to the Antonia and sailed off with Cleopatra. Octavian's general Agrippa remains at battle till the next morning and accepted Antony's surrender. Most of Antony's ships were set on fire or taken by a group of men. Octavian closed in Cleopatra and Mark Antony because he already knew Antony's plans, which were to have the wind help push the boats away from the land. But it ended up not working, but instead closed them in. Octavian had convinced somebody to betray Cleopatra and Antony and give the battle plans. And since Cleopatra, Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, and Caesarian, Cleopatra's son, all died, there would never be a true pharaoh from Egypt ever again. After returning to Alexandria, Cleopatra and Antony tried to figure out what to do next. Cleopatra is ready to flee to Spain, but Antony is too defeated. He hasn't responded to his general and troops that were sent to Asia after defeat. However, Octavian's arrival to Alexandria motivated Anthony to fight and defend Alexandria until morning, when he realized Cleopatra was dead, and most of his troops had already retreated. Antony stabbed himself to learn Cleopatra was still alive and died in her arms, begging her to make peace with Octavian. After his death, Cleopatra could only accept Octavian's demands and also killed herself to avoid being prisoner of war. Octavian assumed rule over Egypt. In the end, Octavian's smaller, more manageable ships were able to outmaneuver the opposing side, causing a loss for Mark Antony and Cleopatra. 
there was a phenomenon called dead water that could have also contributed to the loss of Egypt. Dead water is when a phenomenon is when a body of water separates from a salt water where the salt goes under the water. This condition causes boats to be less manageable and noticeably slower. If the Egyptian army was caught in dead water, then that could have contributed to their defeat. Devastated by her loss, Cleopatra knew that the Roman army would kill her if they caught up to her. So, she fled, not wanting to be killed by the hands of Octavian. In the end, Cleopatra allowed a snake to bite her. She believed it was more honorable than letting the Romans kill her. It is believed that she secretly had an asp delivered to her in the back of figs. Octavian admired Cleopatra's bravery, so he threw a military funeral for both her and Mark Antony. Once Cleopatra and Antony were both dead, this marked the end of the Ptolemaic period and the beginning of Roman Egypt. Octavian ruled till his death, and Egypt was never the same again.